We've seen many crazy things happen in wrestling over the years, but if there's one thing that should be sacred in the sport, it's the mat, the squared circle. However, we have witnessed multiple occasions where WWE rings have become a casualty of war. Today, we will cover all of the times WWE rings were destroyed. Even though we've seen the ring get destroyed multiple times by now, this was a rarity back in the day. Let's start with one of the first times this happened. Be warned, you will see the Big Show multiple times throughout this video. However, the first time he did was on the January 22, 1998 episode of WCW Thunder. The Big Show, known as the Giant at the time, destroyed the ring during a WCW match against Scott Hall. Kevin Nash interrupted the match and attacked the Giant, causing the match to end via disqualification and irritating the one man you should never irritate. Due to a stipulation that prevented the Big Show from attacking Kevin Nash, he took out his anger on the ring. He tore the squared circle while Scott Hall was still inside it. Honestly, it didn't look great and was kind of sloppy but it was still a fun way to end the show. The Giant wasn't done with his ring-wrecking ways, however. After destroying rings in WCW, The Big Show decided to destroy rings in WWE as well. Just four months after his debut, during the June 7, 1999 episode of Monday Night Raw, The Big Show had a match against The Undertaker. So did Kane. In 2012, Zack Ryder's popularity was rapidly growing. However, in true WWE fashion, if we are discussing times when wrestling rings were destroyed, it would be outrageous not to mention ECW. After all, they were known for destroying, well, everything in sight. Thanks to Paul Heyman's creative wrestling brilliance, at a premium live event called Living Dangerously in 1998, the human suplex machine Taz defended the ECW World TV title against Bam Bam Bigelow. In typical ECW fashion, most of the match occurred outside the ring, as Taz and the Beast from the East wrestled among the crowd and around the arena. In the end, when Taz had his signature submission move, creatively named Taz Mission, around Bam Bam Bigelow, the Beast from the East used his body weight to throw Taz backward, and the unexpected happened. Taz and Bam Bam Bigelow broke the ring. Hey, they didn't call the event Living Dangerously for nothing. You should have seen it coming. And since we are speaking about Living Dangerously, our next entry involves Triple H and Cactus Jack, who were feuding with each other in 2000. During their legendary encounter inside the Devil's Playground, two of the greatest performers in Hell in a Cell history went to war against each other, and the two superstars collided in one of the deadliest matches we have ever seen. This brutal match was a title versus career match, and hey, if anyone was ever going to go out with a bang, it was Mr. Bang Bang himself, Cactus Jack. At No Way Out 2000, Cactus Jack found himself in a do-or-die situation inside of Hell in a Cell, because if he didn't beat Triple H for the WWE title, Mrs. Foley's baby boy would have been forced to retire from in-ring competition. Of course, we knew this match would be brutal before it even happened, but even though Hell in a Cell matches have always been known for their insane levels of brutality, they took it to a different level on that year's No Way Out premium live event. Just as he had done in a previous life as Mankind against The Undertaker, Triple H countered and threw Cactus Jack through hell, causing Mick Foley to break the cell and go through the ring canvas below. Mrs. Foley's baby boy was a wild, wild individual. Man, what a moment. And so was this next one. On the June 7, 2010 edition of Monday Night Raw, the WWE changed forever. After the show's main event, which featured a one-on-one -on -one match between John Cena and CM Punk, the Wade Barrett, the faction was given two instructions by Vince McMahon regarding their debut. Don't punch anyone in the audience and don't touch the cameras because, well, they are expensive. Besides that, they were given permission to do pretty much whatever they felt like. With John Cena in the middle of the ring, the group attacked and brutalized John Cena and anyone in their way. Even the ringside announcer, Justin Roberts, was a part of the fray as he was legitimately choked at the hands of Daniel Bryan. Time. It was fresh, exciting, and a spark that the product desperately needed. Eight men had an opportunity to change the biggest wrestling company in the world. Unfortunately, this moment proved to be a what could have been. The idea of one group with wrestlers that most fans were not aware of taking over was something unexpected for the WWE, even though it was later replicated with The Shield. For a long time, the company's mold seemed there was no way to mess it up. The faction comprised Wade Barrett, Daniel Bryan, Heath Slater, Darren Young, Michael Tarver, Skip Sheffield, David Otunga, and Justin Gabriel. These eight men were there to bring change to WWE, 
and you cannot have a bigger impact on night one than attacking the company's franchise players. After the Nexus beat, there was so much potential for a group that many WWE fans believe could have brought serious change. It was an incredible angle that the company was in dire need of at the time. They would get lucky the following year with the rise of CM Punk's popularity, but this was a chance for change. Instead, it led to only one man becoming a world champion from the group, and it just so happened to be the one released after their debut, Daniel Bryan. After feuding for the best part of a year and having wrestled together in the main event of WrestleMania, as well as a tables, ladders and chair match, it was time for Edge and The Undertaker to close the chapter on their epic rivalry. And there was no better way to end it than inside the devil's favorite structure. The rated R superstar Edge learned a painful lesson at the 2008 edition of SummerSlam when he crossed paths with The Undertaker. For months, the ultimate opportunist had used the many tricks from his bad guy book to rob the Deadman of victories, including one for the World Heavyweight Championship that forced The Undertaker out of the WWE. However, when The Undertaker was reinstated, he was looking for more than just a win over Edge, and he got that opportunity at SummerSlam 2008. After defeating Edge convincingly with his signature tombstone pile driver, The Undertaker showed Edge his mean streak when he choke slammed him off a ladder and crushed him through the ring mat. If that wasn't bad enough, the dead man threw a SummerSlam barbecue as the fires of hell shut out at a hole in the ring, resulting in Edge being written off television for months and only returning at the Survivor Series premium live event. Sure, the company had just turned PG at the time, and therefore we didn't see any wrestler bleed during a Hell in a Cell match, which was slightly odd, but no one said anything about Choke slamming a man through the ring and having a fun little barbecue afterward to cap a summer night off. However, that wasn't the only time the Phenom was involved in ring-wrecking moments. The Brothers of Destruction always had an ongoing feud, a love-hate relationship, much like real-life brothers. In 2000, Kane and The Undertaker were back together, having teamed with The Rock at the King of the Ring premium live event to defeat the team of Shane McMahon, Vince McMahon and Triple H in a family versus family match. However, on the August 14th, 2000 edition of Monday Night Raw, the Big Red Machine went back to his wicked ways when he ran in for the save during The Undertaker's match against Chris Benoit, driving off Shane McMahon only to go after The Undertaker, choke slamming him through the ring. In true pro wrestling fashion, Kane added insult to injury by driving off on his brother's motorcycle after choke slamming his brother through the ring, which would help set the Brothers of Destruction match at SummerSlam. Besides the Brothers of Destruction, another pair who also has a history is Brock Lesnar and The Big Show. Their history goes back to the early 2000s, as Big Show is one of the few men who have competitively gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with Brock Lesnar. When WWE first launched the Ruthless Aggression era in 2002, Brock Lesnar became their latest attraction as he was pushed to the main event scene only a few months after making his debut. Defeating legendary superstars like The Rock, Hulk Hogan and The Undertaker, the 25-year-old Brock Lesnar became the hottest act in professional wrestling. On the other hand, Big Show became utilized more efficiently during the early years of the ruthless aggression era. By doing so, WWE immediately pushed Big Show towards the main event scene after jumping ship to the SmackDown brand. Upon his arrival, he quickly chased after the WWE Championship, which led to Big Show pinning Brock Lesnar for the first time and winning the WWE Championship for the second time in his career. The climax of their rivalry occurred during the summer of 2003 with The Big Show chasing after Brock Lesnar's WWE Championship belt. On June 12, 2003, in a The Big Show still on the turnbuckle, Brock Lesnar seized the opportunity to try to perform a superplex on the 500-pound giant. As both super heavyweights stood on the turnbuckle, the fans in attendance that night were becoming more and more alive because they knew that something insane was about to happen. And then it did. Brock Lesnar superplexed the Big Show from the top rope, causing the ring to collapse under their combined weight. The fans in attendance erupted during the last moments before SmackDown went off the air, and the impact of the ring imploding rendered both men unable to compete. Of course, this angle is still considered one of the most epic moments in WWE history, and an angle such as this is not only shown in many flashback replays, but also influences other matches where the ring has imploded. Considering this episode is listed as the 200th episode of SmackDown, WWE's creative booking went all out with a money angle that established Brock Lesnar's rivalry with The Big Show as a classic. Someone else who has been involved in a ring-wrecking moment or two is the monster among men, Braun Strowman. 
In 2017, Braun Strowman and Kane, two behemoths of WWE, squared off in a singles match. Braun Strowman and Kane were involved in a heated rivalry, with both heavyweight wrestlers vying for dominance on Monday Night Raw. Braun Strowman had plenty of reasons to want to destroy Kane during their match on Raw. After all, Kane had turned on Braun Strowman at October's TLC Premium Live event, beating up his tag team partner and throwing him in the back of a garbage truck. Kane learned a painful lesson when he faced Strowman on Raw. During the match, Braun Strowman grabbed the big red machine and delivered a running power slam to Kane, causing the ring to collapse. The ring collapse served as a fitting conclusion to their intense battle, showcasing Braun Strowman's immense power once again, missing superhuman strength. As we have stated before, that wasn't the only time Braun Strowman was involved in ring wreckage. In fact, the first time was earlier that year. In 2017, Braun Strowman and Big Show, both known for their immense strength, collided in a showdown on the April 17th episode of Monday Night Raw, where he showcased his brute strength by taking on formidable opponents. The moment the ring collapsed, it solidified the monster among men as a force to be reckoned with in WWE. Now, back to the ring-wrecking MVP, The Big Show. On the 2011 edition of the Vengeance Premium Live event, Big Show and Mark Henry behemoths found themselves outside the ring, where they continued to exchange heavy blows. Ultimately, their brawl spilled back into the ring. The Big Show climbed to the second rope, where Mark Henry met him with a punch. The world's strongest man then climbed to the second rope and hit a super pull. The impact of the superplex caused the ring to collapse, leaving the audience in awe of the sheer power on display. This moment added fuel to the rivalry between Big Show and Mark Henry, two of WWE's most dominant heavyweights of all time. Although it's been previously done, few spots have the same impact as the ring collapse spot that occurred in that night's World Heavyweight Championship match between Mark Henry and The Big Show. For those of you who have never watched it, this incarnation was much like the previous one between Brock Lesnar and The Big Show on the June 12, 2003 edition of SmackDown. The real story, though, was not the spot itself, but the aftermath of the bout that ended in a no contest. The Big Show, who is obviously too big for a stretcher, was taken away by a minicart while WWE officials helped Mark Henry up before collapsing again. Then, in an act that may turn the corner on the entire SmackDown brand, Mark Henry rose to his feet, shoved away any help, and walked to the back on his own power, proclaiming that he did not need the help, and he was the champion. Shoving officials out of the way and boasting his championship status, like the legend he is, the crowd applauded Mark Henry's effort and ability to walk on his power. Not only had SmackDown ratings on Sci-Fi been stellar since Mark Henry's rise to the top, but it had also been quite a while since a heel like Mark Henry felt fresh. While facial expressions were off the charts, and he gave the image of a maniac who could and would break you in half. W.E. did such a great job building Mark Henry for sustained long-term success as a heel. Mark Henry's Hall of Pain gimmick had taken out numerous stars that could slowly work their way back into regular action, seeking revenge against Cold Steve Austin cut his iconic 316 promo that everyone remembers to this day was the moment his meteoric rise to the top of the food chain began. That was actually not the case. In fact, on August 18th, 1996, two months after he cut the iconic promo, Austin would still be wrestling at SummerSlam's pre-show. At that year's SummerSlam Premium Live event, the legend of Stone Cold Steve Austin nearly got snuffed out by the 660-pound Yokozuna during the event's pre-show. The Rattlesnake and one of the Anoa'i's family royal members had a short, mostly lopsided affair as Yokozuna moved in for the finish just two minutes in. As this happens, the interesting part is that Jim Ross is on commentary, telling the audience that they would never forget the 1996 edition of SummerSlam. JR was right about his assessment. He just didn't know why. With Stone Cold on his back near the corner of the ring, Yokozuna ascended the ropes to deliver his finishing move, the Banzai Drop. However, the top rope snapped under the weight of Yokozuna's grip, causing him to do the most epic backflip of all time. Meanwhile, Steve Austin, who had slithered out of the way, took advantage of the moment and covered Yokozuna to score a pinfall win. Brock Lesnar has long been a freak athlete and a freak of nature, in the most complimentary way possible, of course. Besides that, another thing that WWE fans have always known about the Beast Incarnate is that, well, he does whatever he wants, 
whenever he wants to do it. This leads us to our next ring-wrecking moment. The final battle between Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar for the undisputed WWE Universal Championship came to a jaw-dropping end at the 2022 edition of SummerSlam in a last-man-standing match at the show's main event. Even though the Tribal Chief retained his title after a brutally intense match, the bigger story here was how certified farmer boy Brock Lesnar flipped the ring over with his tractor. The best pun grew up on a farm, so of course he knows his way around a tractor. What an agricultural spectacle. Talk about innovation from our favorite wrestling rancher. Speaking of innovation, one of the hallmarks of JBL's unlikely and long WWE title reign was the fact that he consistently found new ways to weather the storm and somehow leave with the WWE belt around his waist. SmackDown general manager Teddy Long did his best to fight this by booking a barbed wire steel cage match against this video's main character, the Big Show, of course. On the 2005 edition of No Way Out, there was no way to run for the WWE champion, as the top of the steel structure was covered in barbed wire, leaving him at the mercy prize. The world's largest athlete found JBL already outside of the steel cage, as one of wrestling's greatest heels of all time had escaped under the ring, through the ring hole, he was choke-slammed through. What a way to retain the WWE Championship. Which of these ring-wrecking moments did you find the wildest? Let, me Let us know your thoughts in the comment section, and before you leave, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to Ring Rivals so you don't miss the next ones.